from yeah. zero to zero to Taylor from zero yeah. to Taylor basically <laughs> yeah so um which is fun and you know a lot of times I can find people to go with me well, actually most of the time but sometimes <laughs> not always not it's not always convenient or sometimes it's artists that people don't know of so I'm like uh I still want to go right so I'll go and I've gone to like I think this is probably like my third by myself and like I honestly don't care it's pretty sweet actually because in the future talk radio will actually educate inspire and make you think the future is now topics and music that affect your life from universal broadcasting network tune in at ubnradio.com entrepreneur fashion model and magazine publisher judith mancini is dishing the details of your life and about everything that is important to you love sex music art and other juicy topics and now, let's dish with Judith. Hey there, everybody. It's Judith Manzini, and I'm so happy to be having my debut radio show here at ubnradio.com in the beautiful studios at Sunset Gower in downtown Hollywood. I have been a native of Los Angeles, and I was actually born right here in Hollywood. So I am thrilled to be starting this radio show with you. And we will be dishing everything that's important in your life. Besides the health and sex and love, we will be dishing about real estate, investing, money pre pre preservation, excuse me, and anything that's interesting. So if you can call us on our call in number 323-284-7826, we would love to hear from you and see what you want to dish about. If you've read my bio, you know that I started out as a stewardess for United Airlines. And when I left that, I left because I married a sexy single second officer for United Airlines. And the really good thing about that marriage was my two kids, Matt and Megan. That one ended my high-flying marriage, and I moved on to be more of a model and an entrepreneur. And through my life, I started out with a tour company when I was trying to take care of my kids, and I advanced to being a vice president of that company. And from there, I met a pub owner in Los Angeles of quite a famous pub that is now closed, but he wasn't really a family man, and he kind of liked his beverages a little better than he liked family life. So with that, I uh, continued to run the magazine business that we had bought and built it from a 20,000 circulation up to a million point seven and quadrupled the advertising within about 18 months. And while I was in that business... I finally met the love of my life, Lou, and we live right here in Southern California and enjoy a wonderful Christian family life. So today we are going to be dishing with one of our good friends, Miss Noelle Freeman, who is Miss California from 2011, and we will be talking about a myriad of subjects Everything from health, sex, her experiences in the pageant world, what she's doing now, and her charity that she talks about and supports, which is autism. So if you do have any questions for Noelle on any of those subjects, be sure to call in or get on our chat line or Facebook. Let us know what you would like to talk about. 323 Two eight four seven eight two six. If you have any questions about me and entrepreneurship, maybe you can call that number two. Okay, I want you to know that my kids are off on their own life journeys, and Megan is a neonatal nurse, and Matt is in the entertainment industry as a prop master. I think it's always fun to get to know the different generations, and through my life, I have been mentoring quite a few young ladies that uh, I met through my kids, and I've always enjoyed that. But now I find myself starting a new career, and I'm looking to the younger people to mentor me. This is all new to me, as you could tell when I stumbled over my opening. So I have leaned on my good friends and particularly Bob, to help me get this radio show off and launched. Another subject we'll be talking about with Noel is social media. 
So t- stay tuned and give us a call at 323-28 I'm sorry, 2847826. Hello, this is Judith. Hi, Judith. This is Caldwell Sutherland. I want to talk to you about your cosmetics. Oh, thank you, Caldwell. Yes. I do. Uh, you did not mention that. I didn't because the show really is not about my skin care line. But for all of you listeners out there, what I did after I sold my magazine publishing business is I launched a line of anti-aging skin care products, which is LaContessaSkinCare.com. So, Caldwell, thank you so much for calling today. Say hello to your good friend, Noelle. I would love to. She's just fabulous. Well, we're looking forward to talking to her in a few minutes. That's great. Well, I just um, wanted to talk to you about your cosmetics because I had a few questions. And also, I'd love to say hello to Noelle. Hello, Caldwell. Hi, Noelle. How are you, sweetie? I'm doing well. We're in here and starting a new journey. And I, you know, I, I had love a question her for you. Yes. And uh, what do you think about dating married men? <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's start out with something spicy right away. You know, get it spicy. I'm not okay with it as much as those married men seem to be okay with it. <laughs> it seems these days. I don't know. Maybe it's just LA, but um, just because you have a ring on your finger, I don't necessarily. <laughs> think that they understand the commitment that they make but they seem to be okay with it until I find out (laughs) well that was just a a question because I'm sure a lot of people have those um, thoughts and and um, you're so level-headed oh well thank you yeah I'm I'm definitely not um, in the married men market Mm-hmm. I think we've okay. all been down that path one time or another and been fooled by maybe the ring on the finger missing, and but the suntan line is still there. <laughs> Got to look out for that suntan line. Thank you, well, Caldwell. I have to tell you, you look beautiful, and I'm going to let somebody else call in. Thank you, Caldwell. Thank so you, nice Caldwell. to hear from you. Bye. Bye. Well, that was fun, our first call. We're a success already. I'm so happy, and I didn't even get a chance to introduce Noelle. So when we come back from commercial break, I will introduce Miss Noelle Freeman, who is Miss California 2011. There's only one La Contessa Skincare, always searching the world to bring you the finest ingredients and techniques for a more glowing, youthful appearance. Introducing La Contessa Stem Cell Complex Face and Neck Serum, an invigorating formula that uses the incredible longevity inherent in the stem cells of a rare Swiss apple to transfer preservation and longevity onto your skin. You'll notice younger looking and feeling skin after only a few applications. Discover and try La Contessa Skincare for yourself at La Contessa Skin. Skincare.com. That's LaContessaSkincare.com. Welcome back, everybody, to Dishing the Details with Judith Mancini. We're here at the beautiful Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood at UBNRadio.com. It's so much fun to be doing our deba- debut show. <laughs> You'll have to get used to me tripping over my words on my first show. And here today is Miss Noelle Freeman, who is Miss California 2011. Welcome, Noelle. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about uh, your experiences in the pageant world. And why don't you just tell us how you got started in the pageant and what you've accomplished, where you're heading? So much. Um, Well, I actually started my first pageant when I was 15 years old. Um, I was approached by Miss Teenage California. I decided to compete because I wanted scholarship money, and I think that's one misconception that a lot of people have about the pageant industry. Um, I competed and received over $40,000 worth of college scholarship. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, It is, except for I went to Chapman, so that really doesn't touch much, but (laughs) it's it's a lot of of, um, growth that you have and you can experience throughout being involved. Um, I competed for Miss Change California where I won. It was th- there was like 600 girls. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like crying every night, telling my mom like I don't know what I'm doing here. And then um, I won. So from there, I went on to Miss Teenage um, Cal- or Teenage 
United States, where I won as well. Um, and then I went to Chapman and went um, for Miss City of Orange. And um, I took that title as well. So I kind of was on a roll. And I was like, why well, stop now? I want to become Miss America. So the step to do that was to become Miss California. And then um, I went on to place fourth runner up at Miss America in 2012. That's outstanding. Yeah, it was How a lot of fun. How old were you when you began the pageants, when you became Miss um, I was 14, about 15, um, and then it has gone up all the way until um, I was 22. It was my final walk as Miss California. Um, and, you know, there's two different organizations. There's Miss America and Miss USA. Um, so you can actually be up to 27 to meet for Miss USA. Um, so I don't know if that's in the cards for me. Maybe my pageant career isn't over yet. Well, you're still very <laughs> young, so maybe it's not. That, that would be a wonderful thing to pursue. Yes, absolutely. When you did this, were you still studying in school or did you start home study? I was in school still, and I actually graduated, um, and then two months went by, and then I became Miss California, so I was able to really commit that entire year to serve, um, and that's really what it is. It's a full-time job. You're living in a host family. Um, you have appearances every single day, and you're traveling. I traveled over 100,000 miles, so you're constantly speaking, and um, you actually, if you are still enrolled in school, you have to kind of take a leave of absence. Um, you are, obviously, you can't have any other job, so you're really Really tied to the organization and um, it's a it's a big commitment tell us more about the host family I wasn't aware that you live with a host family yeah it's um, a lovely family they live in um, Fullerton California it's a beautiful beautiful home you um, you know they're there to make sure that every day you wake up as Miss California you're going to sleep as Miss California you know you're not a normal girl anymore because you represent an entire organization and one of the longest organizations um, related to the pageant industry so um, it's very important that your personal conduct reflects well in the organization um, and you know the way you dress you made making sure that even when you're going to the gym you look appropriate because you, know, you do need to take pride in the way you look and I think that that's one thing that the you know the pageant industry has really helped me with um, because everyone respects a good well put together woman as we both know so it's really important that um, you learn that throughout your year and you're always representing um, the organization in the best light. Well, I think it's very important that you always look professional. You have days when you can be very casual and dressed down, but it's always good to have yourself put together and not Absolutely. just be bumming around, um, although it's fun. <laughs> <Once in a while. laughs> Absolutely. My my friend, actually, her grandmother told her, wherever you go, if you're going to a grocery store, no matter what, make sure your hair is done, your makeup's done, because you never know when you're going to meet your husband. <laughs> Yeah, well, so. I say that to my husband. <laughs> I say, you never know when I want you to look at me. So let me see what I can Love do it. for you. Plus, I think when you get up in the morning, if you get dressed and you look well, it, it helps you get through the day. It just lifts your spirits. I think we have another call. Lovely. Hello, this is Judith. Hey, Judith. Uh, it's Bob Bogert. Uh, I'm supposed to be asking you a question, I guess. Oh, good, Bob. How do you, what's how your do you question? like what you're doing? Bob. I would love it. Noelle, you know Bob. I do know Bob. What's up, Bob? Noelle, you know Bob. I do know Bob. Bob, you're not yeah, talking. This is, this is Bob right here. <laughs> you Professor up. Bob, why don't you tell people what you did in your life, how you were an entrepreneur? I think it's quite interesting. And then we'll move on. Can you tell us about I'm, 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 what I'm hearing you... something on the telephone. I'm also hearing something on the on the oh well maybe you need to turn your Here, computer I'll speak down for bob okay bob was the engineer for nike oh, hello Air. there judith oh, there we go yes here we are yeah well did you need to mute your computer can you I put the mute button in contact on? today with the my attorneys in cleveland to find out uh, where we stand with the nike patent in and oh. that, that's the Nike anyway, Air Pad. I don't think I want to talk too much about that. Well, of course not. <laughs> How are you girls doing? Of don't course want not. But what Bob calling. did in his life was a very important thing that most of us do enjoy. He put the air in the Nike shoe. So that, that was really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Bob, you said your attorneys are in Cleveland. There's a really hot show there called Hot in Cleveland. <laughs> and they're having a reunion. They had it last night with Mary Tyler Moore. And mm -hmm. Valerie Harper, who is just such an outstanding person and uh, really mm -hmm. putting forth a lot of effort in fighting her cancer. And she's very brave. And we just think she's a remarkable 
woman and strong spirit as well as a fabulous entertainer. But those other young girls in Hot in Cleveland are pretty hot. Maybe you should take a trip back there to see your attorneys. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's Hopefully Caldwell isn't listening. News. Is it, are you girls out on television now? Yes, we're on video. You should be able to see us streaming live on video. Thank you for calling in, Bob. We well, really God, appreciate it. My pleasure. It. It's my pleasure. Nice talking with you. Thank you. Have a good show. Thank we'll you. Talk a little later, huh? Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Well, that was very nice. Those were a couple of old friends of ours that we really, really enjoy, and they're very supportive. And they were really calling to congratulate us with the new show. So I think we just have uh, a little bit of time here before we go to commercial break. And, uh, Noel, I wanted to ask you one more thing, and it slipped my mind, but it had to do with the pageant business, and it was uh, something to do with the host family. Oh, the host family. I, I can't remember. Do they assign it to you, or do you choose? It's the same family. Yeah, it's the oh, same it's family. Always. Uh-huh. Oh. And they're all, it's a volunteer organization, so um, they make, sh- they're, I think they've had about seven Miss Californias, and... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're very skilled in what they do. They've actually, their daughter was Miss California about 10 years ago. So oh, they see. know how it is. Yes. And, you know, it's a, it's a lonely job, really. You know, you're, you're really secluded from a lot of your friends and family for good reason. Um, so they're there to kind of fill in as parents because they know exactly what, you know, she's going through. That's very fascinating. Actually, all the I don't think anybody knew that. Yeah, it's interesting. All the contestants actually are for this year are in Atlantic City right now. They're about to compete, so they'll be. It'll be on ABC September fifteenth, um, and I really think our current Miss California has a good shot at winning. So, oh, wonderful! Let's wish her luck. Now, when they're back there, do the chaperones go with them? The host family? They have chaperones. Yeah. It's so funny because, you know, you think like you go to college and you're, you have all this independence and then you become Miss, you know, California or whatever state and all that independence is really taken away from you. And it's really funny because you're like, I don't ever have to like report into my parents. So and all of a sudden I can't even go to the bathroom and, you know, when I'm competing alone, sure. you have to go with a group of people. So really? it's really funny. Yeah, it's interesting. It's just longstanding traditions, you know, that really haven't been changed in the past 95 years. So, um and I'm sure yeah. with all the kooky people out there these days, it's for oh, your yeah. safety also. That's true. That's yes. true, yes. Okay, well, when we come back from our commercial break, I'd like to speak to you about the charity that you support. And for all of you out there, it's autism. So if you know somebody who has an autistic child, maybe you should call them into the room with you while you're listening to us. Be sure to call in and ask questions, 323-284-7826. We'll be There's right only back. one La Contessa Skincare, always searching the world to bring you the finest ingredients and techniques for a more glowing, youthful appearance. Introducing La Contessa Resveratrol Peptide Rejuvenating Cream. The latest innovation for the reduction of wrinkles combines the natural antioxidant properties of resveratrol with six of the most potent peptides available to address the effect of aging on the skin. Discover and try La Contessa Skincare for yourself at LaContessaSkincare.com. That's La contessaskincare.com Hello everybody, we're back here. We just had a little uh, mishap in the studio. Woo, it's our getting hot in her. <laughs> our <laughs> photographer is getting a little spicy with us here. Why is it so hot? So, all right. We well, we were talking about hot in Cleveland. It's <laughs> hot in the studio now. We have that effect on people, Judith. Okay, <laughs> let's talk let's talk a little bit about autism. Sure. Um, yeah, well, f- the reason why I'm personally involved, um, you know, with aus- autism research and the developmental disorders um, is because my m- school that I went to when I was um, in third grade was attached to a school, uh, Vista Academy was attached to um, California Avenue, a school for children with autism. So every day, you know, my school got out at like t- two, I would go over until their school got out at three and help the kids. Um, and they were all, you know, preschoolers with developmental disorders. And, you know, I was able to really connect with them and I I found a lot of comfort in myself with helping them and there were times that I could get them to do things that the teachers weren't able to to get them to do just because you know it's more of a peer mentorship at that time Um, and I just have such a heart for these children Um, you know it's obviously not something that you can choose and there's really no cure um, but there is a process that you can intercept and um, really help them be integrated into mainstream society Um, and I think it's only become a more relevant topic today I mean we see it almost 
everywhere now. Um, you know, people are finally aware of, you know, what autism is and to help build a community for the for these children and adults that um, suffer with the deve- developmental disorder. So that's really where my, you know, my heart stemmed from um, with helping these children. And I think as Miss California and, you know, anyone really, you, you're you able to have a p- platform to, you know, make a change and, and assist anyone who needs it. Um, autism affects so many people because it affects the families that, um, you know, raise these children. So um, what, I'm what are the statistics with autism now? Because well, right now, it's one in every 88. Um, that's quite high. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually grown. And part of that's because we're actually more aware of what autism is. Um, but yeah, there's definitely environmental, um, you know, influences that might, you know, play a part in the higher increase of um, autism. But, you know, there's really a lot of studies done, but nothing really officially, you know, that links any of that together. What are your theories your layman theories on vaccines that's quite prominent yeah. in well there's certain yeah there's certain um you know higher toxic toxicity levels that are mixed with um testosterone and the mercury that's found in a lot of vaccinations and that's that could be part of why you know um boys are more susceptible to having autism than than girls so um there are those types of studies and also when you mix vaccinations together, um, but they've really come, you know, in the, the world we're in now, have they've really come past that and they're able to make sure that everything's spread apart so, you know, we don't suffer from the, these diseases and um, the disorders. So I don't really think that there, you know, there's nothing, there's no study that's actually been done that proves or disproves it. Um, I personally think that, you know, we're growing more aware of what autism is, which is a good thing. And, um, you know, if the numbers are high because of that, then that's fine because as long as we have the right teachers and mentors in place to help assist these children into, you know, overcoming these daily minefields that are really difficult, um, you know, the, they're going to be able to eventually get a job and, you know, work alongside someone who doesn't have a mental disorder or, um, or autism. Well, I, I'm in favor of vaccines. My mother contracted polio when I was five wow. years old, so I'm very much in favor of people being vaccinated, but I do think they should be spread out and maybe not have so many all at once. Right. Uh, because we do know some children who are autistic, but now, as you say, it's being understood more, so they are getting the help they need. Absolutely. What do you think the role of having a developmentally disabled child has on the parents or the relationship of the caretakers? Well, I think it, it's a stressful situation for everyone involved in the family, not just the parents, but the you know the siblings and the other family members, because there's a there's a point where you you don't necessarily you can't necessarily see uh, someone who has autism. I mean, there's certain there's certain ends of the spectrum where someone with like Down syndrome might be more visible. You can tell, but overall you know they you kind of have to you have to preface you know any interaction you have with the public that your child might not be able to you know communicate properly and it's uncomfortable um and you know a lot of parents i've seen you know you can't blame anyone and you know that comes into play and it's stressful in the marriage and the family um also the the children really you know the siblings really play an integral part in helping that child with um disorder with autism um learn and you know part of their childhood is taken away from them in a way because they're now a teacher and a mentor to this child who's you know struggling with brushing their teeth and they have to constantly help so when people ask me you know how many people how many people are affected by autism in the world and it's really everyone because it's either the family's immediate or um, extended families and the public because they're you know you're interacting with them you have to kind of understand where they're coming from and the struggles that they have um, so it really affects everyone especially um, the family I heard a wonderful story on uh, one of the news channels this past couple of days uh, of a couple a mother who was in a restaurant with a child who was having a seizure and most of the people in the restaurant were very upset and and kind of making snide remarks about why don't you have your child behave and what's wrong with you. And then when she went to pay her bill, the amazing thing was the manager said, your bill's been taken care of and here's a note to you. And it said, you are very special with a very special child. And it wow. really touched my heart. And I think people are starting to be more aware of what's going on around them and more helpful and 
that just goes to show you pass something on kindness and it will come back to you too so wow. we all want to live like that i thought that was very nice yeah that's very touching so well, in your pageants, what else mm -hmm. do you do? Uh, you have your charity that you have to be speaking of on your platform. I know they ask you questions off the cuff. Do they get into political questions? And I'll, I'll throw one at you. What do you think oh, about no. our current problem in Syria? I was with California 2011. <laughs> <laughs> You're no. supposed to be keeping you know up with the news. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny is that you do, You there is interview, which um, is probably the most strenuous part for me because you really have to have this opinion about hot topics that at you know 20 you know, 19 to 24 you might not necessarily even care um, so the one thing that I love that I took away from being involved was the awareness of what's going around you on around you and that carried over long after I was no longer you know the current title holder because I getting ready I watch the news and I'm you know I like to exercise my brain and it's really helpful in conversations you know you meet a complete stranger and no matter how you know how many years uh, apart you are no matter how you know your view on po politics if you know what's going on um, in our society you can talk forever um, because you you can share either the opinion or you can disagree and it creates a good conversation um, so what's going on in Syria I you know I, I've always felt that we're so lucky to have the freedoms that we have in America but as as an American, I I don't think that we're necessarily supposed to be a policing force, and I think that you have to kind of weigh out. I mean, the, President Obama really needs to make a decision on whether or not that it's a big enough risk, um, and if he's going to put all of you know the American lives at risk by being involved and become that policing force and impose you know our views of freedom on these other countries. Um, so I think that we kind of need to stand and, and be an example, but not necessarily put anyone else at risk. Um, um, for war uh, because we have certain opinions in this country. I think most people lean the way you are. I think they're afraid that some of our retaliation over there to prove that you should not use chemical welfare could have a bad effect on the United States in yeah. some form of terrorism. But I also think that we can't allow this kind of action to move forward anymore in these countries. Right. So I think the entire situation is very heated and very bad yeah um it's scary you know it's, it's a scary world that we live in i think right now and it's you know there's been several polls out that you know america americans don't want us to be in another war and i think that that's like <laughs> that's obvious choice um it's it's a really stressful situation for our leadership in this country um i think that you know it also kind of depends on who's willing to side with us and if if you know everyone's kind of bowing out and we're left alone that's really dangerous and i think you have to weigh that out above anything um as much as you you want everyone to have the freedoms that we have and you know be able to to have a democracy in sorts um it's it's hard to really push that on any other country and that's really what's beautiful about our world is that you can go to so many different countries and the government and the you know the day-to-day -day life is so different and um you know there's a certain degree that we have to appreciate that as americans and i really you know my freedom is so sacred and i'm lucky to have it um and you know of course i wish that everyone in this world could have the freedoms that we have yes i think we all agree to that and i think people who are not privileged enough to be able to travel in other countries in the world don't realize all of our freedoms but uh, if you look at uh, North Korea they just executed yeah the girlfriend the ex-girlfriend because of her views and all the family was watching so there's some terrible atrocities going on all over the world in in all countries and even our country where you see some man oh, yeah. is chopped up his ex-wife yeah or and we're his borrowing baby. 70 it's cents on the dollar or 77 cents on the dollar i it, mean it's, we it's have a lot of problems ourselves i think we have another caller awesome hello it's judith and noel hello hi hi i'm on the air who yes you're on the air who is this hi this is jenny hi jenny um I saw Noelle's post, and I just love her, and I wanted to just say hi, and I had a question. Hi, Jenny. Awesome. What's your question? So I have this guy that we went out for one night, and we've never spoken in like four months. 
since our date, and for some reason, he always likes my posts on Facebook and on Instagram and al- always comments. Does that mean anything? Is he a stalker? Should I be concerned? <laughs> I love it. Oh. I, I can relate, Jenny. No, I don't think that he's a stalker um, at all. I think that Facebook and social media is such a way for people to kind of get a little glimpse of attention. Um, I think that he's waiting for you to maybe reach out to him. That's what I think maybe he you know there's some sort of miscommunication between you two and you that's why you haven't spoken and he might be waiting for you to kind of make the next the next go ahead don't you think Judith? Uh, well or maybe he just wants you to know that he likes you but it didn't work out oh well are you interested in him Jenny well not what? anymore because oh. this is a little bit annoying yeah I just want to know what should I do Either I would, if it's a, if it's annoying to the point that you're, you know, you get a woo feeling every time you see him like it, I would just delete him from Unfriend Facebook. Unfriend him. Unfriend him. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, and block him from Instagram because, yeah, that's so creepy. And I, I totally know what you mean. I think that he just wants a, a, attention and I think he wants you to reach out to him. And so you're kind of, by doing that, you're kind of like, nope, I'm not interested. So Jenny, and, do you have right a camera there. on your laptop that he can get to? That happened to um, what? Miss, Miss California recently. The current Miss California, I believe it was Miss California, was talking about the man taking pictures of her through hacking her computer what? in her bedroom while she was getting dressed. And all this has been on the headlines. It's maybe Jenny, you're concerned are you about something susceptible? like Jenny. Yes. Are you susceptible to stalkers? Jenny? Um... <laughs> Actually, I'm so sorry. This is such good advice. I just kind of got lost for a minute. Are we making um, you I'm nervous? Actually, <laughs> I, I mean, I do get a lot of attention, and, and maybe that could be it. I think I'm just um, beautiful. I don't know. But, you know, my thing is I'm concerned about my clout, too, if I, you know, unfriend him. That's a huge issue for me. Well, is he? And I kind of want to maintain that without having to, you know, be that obvious and I unfriend. Think, I think you just have to unfriend and move on. Judith, I do too. you second it? I second it. Thank <laughs> you, Jenny, for calling in. Good luck. Good luck, and defriend is your friend. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 My goodness. Well, let's um, move on to another commercial break, and when Sounds we come good. back, let's talk about some of these celebrities and the things that they put out there on social media and the reality shows and what's going on and, and what kind of happens with that. Cool. There's only one La Contessa Skincare, always searching the world to bring you the finest ingredients and techniques for a more glowing, youthful appearance. Introducing La Contessa Cellular Regeneration Telomere DNA Cream, designed to fight multiple factors of aging by reinforcing DNA structural integrity to lift and tighten the skin. Cellular Regeneration Telomere DNA Cream neutralizes unsightly blemishes while moisturizing skin for a soothing feel, all while you sleep. Discover and try La Contessa Skincare care for yourself at LaContessaSkincare.com. That's LaContessaSkincare.com. Hi, everybody. We're back here at Dishing the Details with Noel Freeman, Miss California 2011, right here at the UBNRadio.com studios at Sunset Gower in the heart of Hollywood. Well, Noel, we have just had a great telephone call with Jenny. And Jenny from the block. No yeah, idea, yeah exactly. Maybe it was Jenny from the block and we didn't realize <laughs> that that would be fun. Uh, what, what do we do about social media and uh, different things that are going on? The reality shows and some of the people have become very wealthy doing this, but they're kind of growing on um, a little bit of nastiness. Dun, dun, dun. Nastiness sells, <laughs> Judith. <laughs> Spice it up. But, you know, what about sex tapes? Paris Hilton and, and Kim Kardashian did this. And, and look at their careers. They just blossom. So are we telling the young people your age and younger than you, the teenagers, that this is the way to go? I mean, I we all so. like spicy things in our life. But how do you feel about that? Yeah, I do think that the it's overall consensus that you know, sex tape um, will get you to the top fast, or but you won't really stay up there very long, um, like the backdoor mom. <laughs> <laughs> I was I went home this weekend and I was telling my mom about the backdoor mom, and 
she was just appalled. Um, but, I'm sure. th- but this is the world that we live in and it's sad and it's also hard in this city especially. But I think that overall, you know, we'd like to think that doing good will get us to where we want to go. I don't necessarily even know, you know, in the place that I'm in, in my life, I don't know anymore. Um, but I think that overall they've created this phenomenon, you know, with the, these families like the Kardashians, they're just so magnetizing. And I think that, um, you know, if you have to get where you have to get, um, you know, doing a negative thing like a sex tape um you know if you can turn that around and really influence people in a positive way and change your life and you know and apologize publicly and make it known that you know this is a moment of weakness and it's like the worst thing ever that you'd want to see an intimate moment being shared like that but you know you can you can probably well, turn it around do you think they were done on purpose or was well, it just I do. something because <laughs> anything you do when you're in love and in your own personal life and you're in the privacy of your home that's fine yeah but if you're leaking the tape to somebody it seems to me that it's not really leaked it's well, put back out door there mom it's wasn't put not out there for back, sure yeah backdoor mom was definitely like a production that they put in mm-hmm. and in plans of releasing it um that i think was the fact and i'm not sure about kardashians or the or kim or paris but i'm sure you know it's somewhat planned and what do you think about their moms like chris jenner has just had she's her all talk for show it and and yes i think they are for it um they're for sure. very supportive of their children and i have to say they're all a very close-knit family the kardashians and the hilton's Uh, So I I don't want to say that they're not. They are very, very close and um, very spiritual. I think, and they are good business examples. After you Mm -hmm. get past that, the Chris Jenner and and Kim have been extremely successful business people, and so are. I think a few things. I think, uh, well, you know, they the sex tapes weren't what got either of them famous by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, Kim Kardashian had a very famous father. Paris Hilton obviously has a very famous father, and that's really what got them in. So I don't know where the sex tape really plays. I do know that you know sex sells and at the end of the day we have to understand that these reality shows are entertainment and if it was it, you know the reality of it and may, might not actually even be there and you know you watch these other shows like hot in cleveland or these scripted shows that are just as scandalous if not more and and we're okay with it to a certain degree so we kind of have to just i i watch all reality television under the impression that it was scripted and I'm okay with it because it's um it's entertainment but I do think you mentioned a a really good point of what is this doing to our upcoming generations and how is this affecting um you know their thought process in their day-to-day um and that's the scary thing no matter what I mean remove the Kardashians and remove Paris Hilton and you know they're in a in a time where you can access anything any information any video any photo on the internet um and so you know keeping them safe as you know that's the parents job in my opinion um is really important and after that you kind of your hands are tied well, I think that is a problem with uh, some of these very young children. They don't understand what they're putting on the Internet is there forever and ever floating around in For the sure. cloud. So I, I do think it is a problem. How young yeah. do you think people should be when they get their first iPhone or their first tablet? Because now the L.A. school system, and I'm sure it's true all over the country, um, particularly with this new core education at c-o-r-e core it's something that the federal government wants to put in i haven't truly studied it enough yet to speak on whether it's good or bad but i do know that kids are trying to keep up with modern technology and in our la school system here they are all supposed to get tablets or ipads whichever they decide to give them so that they can take these core tests which are yeah technology yes and i think Mm -hmm. it's very important but boy when i took my sats (laughs) i didn't even have a calculator (laughs) i know maybe that's why i'm still not good at math i should have had a calculator (laughs) 
it's such a fine i don't think that we're allowed to have maybe it's changed but when i took the SATs, you weren't allowed to have anything well i don't know i mean i'm thinking now if they're giving they tests just in take school it on the with iPad. an ipad it seems a little strange because just video conference into the sat yes verbal test <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think that that's where it's going but you have to understand that at the end of the day these these um, generations are trying to get jobs in a few years and i know you know in the few jobs that i've had everything is digital and granted my area of expertise is digital marketing so that might be part of it but that's really where everything is going and if you're not well versed and not knowledgeable with an ipad tablet anything technology wise you know wh where are you left you know what jobs opportunities do you even have so i i support young children being able to adapt to technology at an early age um, as long as it's monitored by the parents and it really comes down to um, a proactive family and you you want your your child at a young age i th i would to have access to an iphone um, in dangerous situations it's very important you can do find my iphone you'll know exactly where they are yes i think that's so there's remarkable ups, yeah there's ups and downs i think to every everything especially technology and especially social media um, you have to just be aware of it as a parent and be able to interse intercept when you see it being misused so you would be maybe against letting very small children play these horrific video games Ugh, i don't even but have not a be jeweled or water or something I like that well my like grandkids games. do they like to play those games yeah, and i think Candy that's Crush. fine but you know they're outside also swimming and running yeah. and doing all sorts of things but they they do play those different I'm not games. A, I'm not against you know I, I think that violence in video games is a whole nother subject for a whole nother day but I don't I'm not against using technology in a, in a lot of increments you know I think it's it's part of the developmental process and I it's so fascinating because we'll go you know I'll spend time with my family and my you know 12 year old niece will be able to show my mom everything and she's just sitting there like I have no idea how to even call somebody you know and so it's it's fascinating to be able to see it you know the reverse teaching and I love it um and that's why I support it and i I love social media. I love technology. Well, so. I love it, too. Uh, and I'm learning and I'm doing fairly well with Twitter and Facebook and on my computer. I'm pretty literate, I think, until I have to call my daughter-in-law over all the time. <laughs> I can't get my email for some reason. It's frozen. Blah, blah, and she comes running over and helps me. <laughs> Thank goodness, Kim. And then there is my new radio show. And if it hadn't been for Bob... <laughs> I wouldn't have had an introduction today. I love <laughs> because it. Because I do not Bob's understand how to convert files to what he needs. So thank you so much, Bob. I really, I'm learning boop, a whole boop. new career at my age, 66. So this is really fascinating to me. And that's why I was saying, you know, I am so pleased to have mentored young people in my life. Yes. And I'm so happy to have young people mentoring me now in my it. life. So Absolutely. it's really amazing to me. And I think social media it's not just for seeing your friends, but it's a big, big part of business now. Oh yes, I, I. That's what one thing that I like to talk about. Um, you know, f for young, you know, startup companies, it's very important because social media. If it's not making you money, it's it is a little narcissistic and it's um, a little bit pointless. So I see it just as a tool to increase business and increase sales and whatever you're trying to sell. And if it's building your own brand, that's that's awesome too. At the end of the day, social media allows us to connect with people from across the world that share the same point of view of, as us or can help enhance our lives in some way. And so if we look at it that way and kind of take away the, you know, the dangers of it, it's a really positive tool to have. Um, and you're just deprived if you're not, you know, visible and on it. I think you're absolutely right. In my opinion. Right. Well, no, I think you're absolutely <laughs> right because it has really helped me and I really admire some of these, particularly women in business. They seem to use it a lot more than men do. And uh, if you look at the most successful of any of the housewives on reality shows, they've all branched out to other businesses and they've used social media for them. I think the most successful one is having her debut as a talk show host next week on the 9th, and that's Brit Beth, excuse me, Bethany. I think she's marvelous, mm -hmm. and she really has uh, really applied herself hard to her career and used a lot of social media. 
Yeah, I think absolutely. She's, she's one of the most successful, if not the most successful. Yeah, she's awesome. And she has a great personality too. Yes, <laughs> so she does. You have to have the core root has to be there. And yes. that's either a good product or, you know, a good personality and good brand. Um, and then social media can just launch right. that. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Exactly. Well, all right. We need to take another commercial break and then we'll be right back. And we're going to share some spicy things that are in our closet. Oh. Don't forget to call us. 323-284-7826. There's only one La Contessa Skincare, always searching the world to bring you the finest ingredients and techniques for a more glowing, youthful appearance. Introducing La Contessa Sunscreen Defense System. La Contessa Zinc Oxide Sunscreen Defense Cream, SPF 30, is effective yet gentle enough for the most sensitive of skin to provide strong protection against UVA, UVB rays. La Contessa Sunscreen Defense provides strong UVA coverage to help stop photo aging. Discover and try La Contessa Skincare for your yourself at lacontessaskincare.com. That's lacontessaskincare.com. Here we are back at Dishing the Details with Noel Freeman, Miss California 2011 at ubnradio.com in Hollywood at the Sunset Gower Studios. Noel, we're going to talk about what's in our closets, but right now we have a caller. Welcome, caller. Who are you? Announce yourself. Is that me? Yes, that's you. Who is this? Hi, this is Candy. Hey, Candy, how are you are doing? You doing this is I'm great. I am enjoying your show. Oh, Just thank so you. your listeners know, I'm your I'm Judith's son's mother in law. <laughs> <laughs> and a very good mother in law you are too. Thank you so uh, much for calling. Do you have a question for what uh, Noelle can tell you she's sharing in her closet? <gasps> I've got um, a lot of skeletons. Gee, what was I, you know, I had to come to my phone in the car. So what is your last topic? I've been listening. Oh, what okay. We're topic? talking about what's in our closet. T tell us about your shoes, Candy, and then Noel will fill in. Thank you for oh, calling. Oh, my goodness. My shoes. Well, I got to tell you, um, Imelda Marcos would be proud of me. <laughs> I love my shoes. And, uh, you know, and I... I I must admit that up late I've been doing a lot of bargain shoe shopping because I'm in flats now that I'm a little older and uh, lots of cute flats. Well, How that's about good. Your okay, <laughs> we're going to have Noelle tell us what she has hidden in her closet. Thank you for calling, Candy. Appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck to Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Well, I'm, what, I'm trying what to think. Secret <laughs> things do you have in your closet? I have um, secret. Well, I have hmm. that not everybody knows. I'm not asking you. I have a lot you, of coral. I'm not asking you about things like uh, we like were dress talking up. about before. Yeah. I have a lot of <laughs> costumes. I do love dressing up. And I actually just got an email. It's like, get your 50% off your Halloween costume. So I'm like, Halloween's already coming up. I need to prepare. <laughs> I always have like 20 different Halloween costumes. So I do have a lot of costumes. Um, they're really just used for Halloween, though. <laughs> um, but I, I like to dress up, too. I love it. It's fun. It's supposed to clean and you're... Your French made costume, why not? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I have a lot of coral in my closet, a lot of pink coral shirts. And actually, every time I go shopping, my friends are always like, Why do you always go for that color? Like, the shirt will be in, or dress will be in 20 different colors, and I'm always going for the coral pink. So it's definitely a pink shade. Lots, 50 shades of pink <laughs> there you go <laughs> 50 shades of pink whoa whoa that's kind of spicy and i have a lot of shoes Definitely. well I, I think maybe we all have a lot of shoes i love high heels they used to be called spike heels and i can remember spike? going. yes and i can remember <laughs> going to a charity luncheon with a, a woman speaker who was going to tell us how we should dress and what we should have in our wardrobe and she had flat shoes on and she was in her early 30s at the time and so was I and she said don't you ever ever wear high heels those are hooker shoes <gasps> they're come fuck me shoes you oh. keep those off and now I would love to see guilty. what she's wearing be she must have been guilty because now everybody is wearing high heels oh everyone which I find more comfortable so. me too <laughs> so uh, people like don't them. get it I'm like I I always wear heels I even sometimes will walk to the grocery store in high heels and you know what it gives you the bum lift 
It does. It gives and you it a makes nice your calves look mm-hmm. nicer. That's it's right. really it is. It's where it's at. I know one of my older friends. Um, he always says, "Don't ever wear red shoes and not red <laughs> bottom. We can wear the Louboutins, but not all red shoes because oh, I he love calls red those shoes. hooker heel. Uh-oh. Oh, I love Judith, those red shoes. This is a sneak and peek another into life. What your Look, other I, life. There's a little bit of a mean girl in me because I like to dress up like you say for Halloween and all. And there is a a big function in LA that's quite prominent it's a ball and um, it's fancy dress meaning you have to go in a masquerade costume and I was married to this pub owner who was diminutive in size and I I was not having the, the happiest of marriages at that time and so I decided that we would go as Napoleon and Josephine love it (laughs) <laughs> love it, love it. I love loved it. it. It was so funny, and I got so many comments. It it was great, Amazing. and I kind of liked my boobies hanging out then too. Yeah, it's and fun. I was sexy when I was young, so that well, that was really. You're fun. never too old to be sexy. So well, those thanks. short guys. You I don't be know. Careful. My husband's here, being my producer today. I don't know. He's doing he a great that. job. Listen, everybody, this <laughs> is the end of my show. I want to thank you so much for being with me. And there's a couple things I want you to remember. Number one, Happy New Year to our Jewish friends. <laughs> and happy birthday to my friend Barbara. And the other thing is, uh, let's not forget 9-11. It's coming up in a couple days. Let's remember how our country was then. And let's be patriotic and loving and be kind to everybody. And the one thing I want to leave you with today is cherish yesterday, dream tomorrow, and live today. Thank you. Holla back. Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Because you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard-to-find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UENradio.com. Our kids aren't always mindful of dangerous traffic hazards. So when you take the streets, slow down in child-filled areas. This message, a courtesy of Soundcheck, your Radio Shack and five-star cellcom agent. Family owned and operated for over seven years. Trust their years of experience to work for you. Call today, 920-822-8555. 920-822-8555. Check out their new store expansion. That's Soundcheck, your Radio Shack and five-star cellcom agent in Pulaski. Wishing everyone a safe and happy 4th of July. Easy come, easy go, that's just how you live, oh.